Good morning. We're going to look at um, a concept known as stereoisomerism in this video. Now you've met previously the idea of what's known as structural isomerism, where molecules can have the same molecular formula, but can have different atom connectivities. So in this case, we have a linear straight chain um, alkane here, and in this one we have a branched alkane, and both of these molecules have the same number of carbons. All that's changed is how those carbons are joined together. Okay, that's structural isomerism. Stereoisomerism isn't to be confused with structural isomerism. Okay. okay. So stereoisomerism, instead of structural isomerism, we have exactly the same atom connectivity. So the same atoms are connected to one another. What's different is the spatial arrangement that those atoms take up. Okay, that's stereoisomerism. So here's an example where we see that this carbon is still connected to this carbon, which is connected to that carbon, which is in turn connected to that carbon. But if we look at this version, we see that we retain that atom connectivity, but instead of this group being on, on the bottom as we're looking at it, this group is now pointing up. Okay. And the, the presence of this double bond stops these groups from rotating and being equivalent. Okay, So these compounds are different from one another. They have a different spatial arrangement. So they're known as stereoisomers. So in stereoisomers, the atoms are joined to each other in the same way, but their spatial arrangement in, in, in space is different. Okay, and this is one of the examples that you'll meet later on. This is an example of geometric isomerism due to double bond position. Okay, the group position of the groups around a double bond, rather. Um, but you will you'll meet stereoisomerism in a variety of of different contexts. Now you might need some convincing that these groups are actually in different spatial positions. Okay, so if I take you to look at three-dimensional model of this, okay, this, right, the grey line in the middle is a double bond, and you'll see that, we can see that this, these atoms here are sp2 hybridized, they're flat, okay, and then we have these two methyl groups at the end, and they're pointing like in this case, towards us. Okay, one coming down, one going up. Okay, and we can rotate this, and you can see how these groups are arranged in three dimensional space. Okay. Now, if we have a look at the other one, okay, you'll see it looks like this. Okay, it's now bent. Okay, I think in the, in the picture opposite you could have it so here, shaped like that. Okay, and there it's like that. Now because of this double bond, these groups cannot move their positions. Okay, they're fixed in this sort of bent configuration like that. Okay, we can compare that with this more sort of zigzag configuration, let's call it like that just now. And you can see that the spatial arrangement is different, but they have the same atom connectivity. So the same atoms are connected to one another. It's just that the three-dimensional space, they're in different positions. Okay. In the next video, we'll talk about a special case of this, stereoisomerism called chirality and then in forthcoming videos we'll look at how we uh, as chemists communicate which uh, stereoisomer we're talking about okay so we've gone previously from talking about molecules in two dimensions and drawing molecules 
Now we're looking at molecules in three-dimensional space.